An initial SJSU alert about a man with a gun on campus left many students in fear. See what really happened and how students are reacting. And SJSU is bringing an organization, bringing the issue of domestic violence to light. And an international journalist comes to campus to accept a prestigious award. Update news starts now. From the School of Journalism and Mass Communications at San Jose State University, your source for what's happening with a fresh perspective on today's issues. You're watching Update News. Welcome to Update News. I'm Adrienne Manso. And I'm Jessica Monday. Thanks for joining us. Guns on campus are on the minds of many students following the Oregon mass shooting. This week, a scare came to San Jose State. Eugene Liu is live on campus with more. Eugene? Thank you, Adrian. A text alert from the university police has warned students about a potential gunman on campus. It happened Tuesday as students were attending classes. University police issued a text alert warning students to stay away from the engineering building until further notice. Uh, I was actually in class. Uh, I got the alert on my phone. So I texted my sister right away. She was in a class over by the engineering building. Uh, so I just want to make sure she was all right. University police was informed by the San Jose Police Department regarding a suicidal subject that was possibly armed in an area on campus. The subject was described as a male Pacific Islander. We located the subject's vehicle that was parked at the uh, end of the 7th Street lot and uh, uh, witnesses advised that the subject had walked on the campus. The police located the subject near the engineering building and was put into custody. At this point, he has been, uh, he's been turned over to another agency and uh, we're, we're, the investigation is still ongoing at this time. He's not a student, he's not a staff member, he's not faculty or anything like that. In case of future threats and emergencies, students can sign up to receive police alerts via text by setting up their caller ID yeah. or by email at sjsu.edu slash alert sjsu. Since then, we have learned that the man's wife called Fremont police after realizing that not only he was missing, but the handgun as well. University police did not know why he entered the campus or who called San Jose Police Department. Live on campus, Eugene Liu, Update News. Back to you guys. Campuses across the country are taking steps to guard against gun violence. Here at San Jose State, the University Police Department held its annual active shooter training Monday afternoon and provided helpful tips for such a dangerous scenario. Christian Ponce joins us live from the newsroom with more. Christian? Adrian, San Jose State is taking precautions after the recent tragedy at Umpqua Community College in Oregon. Faculty and staff are being prepared in advance in an effort to prevent a tragedy from ever occurring here on campus. Professors sat down for a lesson from police Monday afternoon, learning what to do in the case of an active shooter on campus. The three main keywords emphasized were run, hide, and fight. Video demonstrating an active shooter scenario showed how to put run, hide, and fight into practice. To me it's important because I can't imagine uh, being in a situation as, uh, that's more dire than an active shooter situation, except one more situation that's worse seems to me being in that same situation and being unprepared for it. Well, you don't want to be right Police Captain the... Frank Bell Castro showed faculty and staff how to lock doors found on campus tight so a shooter wouldn't be able to open them. He demonstrated using a belt on how the procedure is properly done. After the presentation, the captain opened up the floor to concerned faculty who had questions. He emphasized the need for professors to talk to their students about these types of scenarios. We have 32,000 students and we want to reach as many of them as possible. So you, everyone in this room is integral to that part. If you can help us get that message out, that's, that's what we need. We need your help as much as you need us. Some of the information surprised the audience. I think the one thing that I always hear him say that really kind of people have a moment of shock is sometimes you need to suspend kind of your human emotions and your kind of logical sense to help someone that's in need on the floor if they've already been shot. The tips given to the faculty are for everyone to see. They can be found on UPD's website. Live in the newsroom, Christian Ponce, Update News. The search for a new SJSU president is taking shape. The Presidential Search Committee held an open forum Thursday at Morris Daily Auditorium. This panel by the SCSU uh, Board of, of Trustees was the first meeting for the selection of the new president. Various faculty were present to hear what the panel had to say. 
the big concern for faculty in attendance is how the new president will affect them. After a brief speech by the committee, the faculty present voiced their concerns and proposed suggestions. The California Faculty Association was present at the forum. Union President Preston Rudy is a sociology professor at San Jose State. He voiced Personally, his I wanted to make the case that, uh, that uh, the faculty uh, need to be respected and uh, secondly, that uh, we don't work as volunteers, we work as employees, and so we need to get paid. Open forum on San Jose State's Academic Technology YouTube channel. The Peer Health Education Group is making the campus aware of violence with a little help from clothing items. San Jose State is currently dressed up with shirts all around campus. The Clothesline Project brings awareness to intimate partner violence. Students are encouraged to participate in activities throughout the week, including creating buttons and customizing a shirt. Workshops throughout the week focused on healthy relationships. Senior Elizabeth Sharkishian says that bringing awareness to a sensitive topic is important. The Close Arm Project is pretty much is a national initiative for those that suffered, so victims, survivors, families, and friends of different types of, different types of violences. And it's just a visual display of what we have through the t-shirts and we display it on campus throughout the week to just give comfort and also an art initiative for them to feel a bit more comfort and also to feel connected to what happened to them in their past. The Peer Health Education brings the Clothesline Project to campus every October. T-shirts with flyers promoting the week are hanging around the campus event center, the Student Wellness Center, and many classroom buildings. A student's idea has come to life here on campus. It brings a new monument to San Jose State, just in time for Legacy Week. Michaela Shelton has the story. We're leaving this legacy on the campus of SJSU. Really excited for this poll, and I'm so glad that it's here on our campus. It's a really great symbol of diversity, and even though we come from different backgrounds, but it'll promote diversity among our school and also in other parts of the world. The Peace Pole stands about eight feet tall and has an engraved plaque with the date and car's name. Many, many students for years to come will be able to witness this legacy and see the Peace Pole. On campus, Michaela Shelton, Update News. Sarah Seidner is a reporter from CNN who has shared the stories of many from across the globe. This week at San Jose State, she came to share her own story and accept a prestigious award. Update news reporter Dustin Dorsey has the story. San Jose State University School of Journalism and Mass Communications proudly awards the 2015 William Randolph Hearst Award to Sarah Seidner. An emotional Sarah Seidner stood in front of a group of students, staff, and guests of San Jose State University as she reminisced and accepted the 2015 William Randolph Hearst Award. The award is presented to the person that embodies everything that it takes to be a successful and outstanding journalist. That person, according to journalism professor Diane Garazzi and San Jose State University, is CNN reporter Sarah Seidner. Um, when she goes out to cover a story, she cares about the person that she's covering. She just doesn't, you know, uh, get a quick sound bite and then leave, but she really talks to people. Um, we, we deal with a lot of negativity and we put a lot of negativity out there, so I guess we deserve it. But it's nice when somebody says, not that. Seidner has covered stories across the country and the world, including the Ferguson riots and issues all across the Middle East. When she came to San Jose State, her day consisted of a sit-down conversation with students, a luncheon with Bay Area media guests along with journalism faculty, and several question and answer sessions in front of JMC classrooms. They were extremely engaged and you can tell um, from the questions that they asked and from the attention that they paid that they really want to be in this. It is a unique opportunity for students to be able to speak to professionals about life in the real world, an opportunity that is filled with many lessons. It's one thing to read something out of a book and tell you, you should do this, you should do that, but to hear it from her in the real world setting, it just puts an entire different spin on it. If Seidner had one piece of advice for students, it would be to enjoy their lives. On campus, Dustin Dorsey, Update news. Coming up, we'll have Vanessa Gangora here with Arts and Entertainment. And Campus Movie Fest once again makes its way to SJSU. 
fraternities and sororities went head to head for the annual Greek Week festivities. And update news was there as the new homecoming royalty was crowned. Find out who when we return. SJSU students are getting a lesson in entrepreneurship. Alumnus Sean Tai was the presenter at Spartan Voices Tuesday. Spartan Voices is a Spartan Success Series event hosted by the Student Alumnus Association. Tai is the founder and executive director of Oakland Digital, an award-winning nonprofit community building organization. Oakland Digital bridges three gaps, digital literacy, opportunity, and tech inclusion. It has been operating since 2009 and just recently received a grant from Google.org to build a new app called Bridge for Social Good. Ty came to speak to students to spread inspiration, to pr promote entrepreneurship, and teach effective methods to be a strong voice and advocate in the community. I think San Jose State taught me how to be an entrepreneur. Uh, and one of the biggest things that I love doing is giving back to the community, not just through press releases and social media, but actually in person. So to be able to interact with a group of 50, 60 students, get them engaged in the conversation, get them wanting to give back to the community, sparking their minds and sparking their brains to give back. That's what excites me and it's all through San Jose State. Students shared stories about how they want to make the Bay Area a better place. Three students were chosen to go with Digital, Oakland Digital to Twitter headquarters on Friday. Along with homecoming, Greek Week is also this week. Events are designed to promote Greek unity. The Greek community at SJSU has four councils. Social councils, historically African-American, and multicultural sororities and fraternities. In all, some 40 Greek organizations are on campus. Greek Week gives them a chance to join together as a community. We have four communities that traditionally all look differently, right? Some are like one gender, some are co-ed genders, and so it's really an opportunity to um, bring awareness to themselves and have them get to know each other. Greek Week started on Monday with a kickoff in the Student Union. Games and ice creams were there for all the Greek members. It's designed to help collaboration and friendship between the four Greek council towns and state. So this week we have a great um, week planned full of fun field events. Each organization was separated into either the blue, gold, or white team made up of fraternities and sororities from each council. They may not have just their council on the team, really an opportunity to kind of have them share something in common, right? Um, Greekdom kind of means something different to everyone. Greek Pitch was a singing event that pit the teams against each other in a pitch perfect style battle. Greek Pitch last night was definitely my favorite part. That was just a lot of fun. I, anything like singing and music and karaoke type, I'm just going to have a ball at. And I emceed that event, so it was a lot of fun. To see the three teams just go head to head back and forth. Heat of competition, but it was all, all just for fun and games and high spirits. One, two, three. Wednesdays, the teams did an Instagram contest to see who could post the most pictures with their hashtag. Each team decorated a chariot and they'll be racing at halftime. Thursday night, the Greek Week teams attended Fire on the Fountain, and later tonight they'll be competing in the Greek Olympics at Spartan Stadium. We have Vanessa Gungora here with the latest in arts and entertainment. What's new, Vanessa? Well, actually, downtown there's an art gallery that has some pretty cool exhibits. Okay. Our Khalid Art Gallery across the street from San Jose State has two new art exhibits with a cartoony theme. The first exhibit, titled The Variant Life by Corey Thompson, is based off the inspiration he has for comic books. Images that have inspired him in his lifetime have also been translated onto these paintings. Famous comic book characters are depicted here with Thompson's twist. The other exhibit is by the artist Donnie Foley, titled Don Bond's Fairy Tales. His images are based off stories from his upcoming, upcoming book of the same name. Foley says his images start with the illustration and then he fills the backgrounds with words. The words in the background have a soft, contained story. The thing I like about mine is it actually feels like you're stepping into the stories that are in the book. So you see the stories, the images in the book, they, they look spot on, like a world out of my own story. So it's kind of be fun to step into my own world. Uh, and Corey is stepping into his comic world. These exhibits will be available for viewing until October 13th. Campus Movie Fest came to San Jose State this week to host a grand premiere. It showcases talented San Jose State student filmmakers. Update News reporter Eugene Liu has a story. 
Student filmmakers brought friends and family to Morris Daily Auditorium Wednesday to see the Campus Movie Fest premiere. Every year, the Movie Fest comes to San Jose State to discover talent and give student filmmakers exposure. Campus Movie Fest, we're actually the world's largest student film festival. We give students free equipment and they make their own five minute movie in a week about whatever they want. We have a big red carpet finale for the top 16 films and the films are actually judged by a panel, an honors panel of students, faculty and staff from San Jose. The top 16 are not announced in advance, so all participants can be surprised when their film is shown at the finale. Last year's winner was PR major Melissa Llewellyn, who went all the way to win the national competition and was featured in the Cannes Film Festival. I submitted a short film to Campus Movie Fest last year called More Than a Number about former foster youth at San Jose State trying to graduate from college and basically beating the odds. It made it to the top four, which meant that it received a jury award and was going to be shown at their Hollywood Nationals um, in July. Llewellyn wants to revisit her documentary and enhance it to its potential. This was my first endeavor to do a non-news piece, and so there was definitely things I could have done differently, not to mention we were only given a week to shoot and edit the film. New students were excited this week to see their films on a big screen, but some films were not chosen in the top 16. My film didn't get shown uh, at this year's Movie Fest. Uh, pretty disappointed. I had a lot of people come and uh, support me. Llewellyn has this advice for students whose film didn't make the cut. Yeah, keep trying. I mean, find a team, find people that are willing to invest in your skill set and make you better. Just like last year, the top four films of the 16 chosen will receive a jury award and be viewed at the Hollywood Nationals with a chance of winning big, being selected to go to Cannes. On campus, Eugene Liu, Update News. And that's all I have for arts and entertainment. Those movies look great. And that sounds like a really great opportunity for the students. And when we come back, we'll have even more homecoming news for you. Find out how the football team is gearing up for Saturday's big game. And a new store opened their doors this week, exciting many Bay Area sports fans. We'll tell you where when we return. We have Dustin Dorsey here for sports. What do you have for us, Dustin? We've got a lot of exciting stuff. It's homecoming week. Let's get into it. The homecoming festivities continued as the Spartan community gathered for fire on the fountain. The pep rally got the students in the mood for the football game Saturday night. Adrian Manso reports. The ninth annual fire on the fountain rally kicked off Thursday to build excitement for homecoming week. Booths filled with student organizations lined Tower Lawn. It gave students a chance to discover clubs they'd never experienced before. I wanted to be a part of the school. Since I'm a transfer, I don't really know anybody, so I just wanted to meet people, I guess, and see what the school's about. Performances were on the main stage all night with acts ranging from dancing to juggling and a fire performance. And look, definitely the, perform the performances are amazing, so um, probably like the best part. Lewis says the event really gets students pumped and it is a chance for the school to come together. There's so many freshmen and older, you know, sophomores, juniors, all that. So they just have a chance to collab and get excited for the football game. The football team even came out to the rally to personally invite students to the game. Head coach Ron Carragher was joined on stage by the team captains. Hey man, we have a big game uh, this Saturday, man. It's for first place. So you know, it would be a lot to see you out there support us. Go Sparks. The night ended with the announcement of the homecoming court. In an effort to be more gender neutral, a typical king and queen were not named. Instead, Diana Garcia and Drew Wansley each went home with the title of homecoming royalty. Live on campus, Adrienne Manso. This Saturday is the homecoming game against San Diego State, and the Spartans are ready to spear the Aztecs. Students are getting pumped up for the game. Vanessa Gongora reports. Our players know their players, our students know their students, and a great opportunity for us to play against a team that's a perennial conference championship contender. 
The Spartans may have lost to the Aztecs last season, but they are putting that behind them because Coach Carragher says they feel they are a different team in 2015. We got a really good attitude. Our guys are hungry as we've been all year, and I think uh, coming off a nice overtime win, we realized that, hey, that's behind us, and we got to shift our focus to San Diego State, and we respect them. They're a physical team, and we're having some pretty physical practices this week in preparation for uh, Saturday night's game. In practices, the offensive line has been going up against the defensive line to help improve each other. Uh, it's, it's very, very good. And we go practically every day where we go against our first team offense, our first team defense, our second team offense against our second team defense. And getting that line play and that competitive juice is going, it's, it's better than just having a scout practice. Starting Spartan linebacker Christian Tago says this isn't just any game, but a game that will determine how bad they want to win. Uh, you know, there's a lot of the line. It's, 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 it, to me, it's either win or go home. This is for the first place in the West in our division, so you know, it's a really big game. The starting quarterback this Saturday's game will be Kenny Potter. This is his first year playing as a Spartan, and from what he's heard about San Diego State, he knows it's a big game to win. We want to we win it pretty bad. It's a, we, we just know how important it is, and every game we want to win really bad, but the next one's always the most important game of our season, and so far this is... From what I've heard, this is this is the biggest game in, in a while for, for our school. So we're excited, we're excited, and we're going to go out and play hard. Not only are the football players ready for the big homecoming game, but students are also spreading the Spartan spirit on campus. You know, be, besides being excited for the tailgate, I'm also excited for the football game in general just because our football team looks promising this, uh, this year. Homecoming week is what students look forward to every year. And now that it's finally here, the Spartans are ready to make their school proud. On campus, Vanessa Gangora, Update News. San Jose Earthquakes fans now don't have to visit Avaya Stadium or shop online in order to buy merchandise from their favorite team. The Earthquakes have opened a kiosk close to home in one of the biggest malls in the area. Just like the stadium store, the kiosk has the same products from jerseys and scarves to shirts and hoodies. The Valley Fair Mall is sort of right in the heart of San Jose. It's one of the highest traffic malls in California and in the country, so it was a great place for us to start our you know, merchandising outside of the stadium. We think it's going to be very successful there. Many says sales have been doing well since the store opened on October 1st, and he says that he thinks it will continue to do well in the upcoming holiday season. The store is open seven days a week during the regular mall business hours. And let's take a look at next week for your San Jose State Spartans. Of course, we've got the big homecoming game this Saturday at Spartan Stadium. Kickoff begins at 7.30, and we also have the women's volleyball team playing against Colorado State University at Spartan Complex Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. And last but not least, the men's water polo team will also have a match at the Aquatic Center this Sunday. They'll be taking on the UCLA Bruins. And that's all I have for sports this week, guys. It's going to be a big weekend for San Jose State. Spartan up. Can't wait. <laughs> and that does it for this week's edition of Update News. From all of us here, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.